Hi everyone! Today I'm going to talk about this MSI GeForce RTX 3090 Gaming X Trio graphics card. And if you haven't seen my video on the RTX 3080 versus the RTX 3090 for gamers, I strongly recommend you do so because unlike the 3080, which is just a really good graphics card, this RTX 3090 is a little bit more complicated. And in this video, I'm not gonna repeat myself too much, but just quickly recap some of the general 3090 information and just mostly focus on this MSI model specifically and how it compares to Gigabyte's RTX 3090 Gaming OC, which is the only other 3090 I had a chance to test so far, as well as the 3080 model I have here. Now, I don't know the exact pricing just yet, and I expect the prices to be all over the place right now, uh, but I think it's fair to expect roughly a hundred euro or dollar price premium over the MSRP. So it might not seem like a big price premium for a nice cooler and some features, but keep in mind, the MSRP is still $1,500, so it's a lot of money. Let's see what you get for that. This video is brought to you by Seasonic and their Prime Series power supplies. These top quality power supplies are very efficient, they're whisper quiet, extremely reliable and my go-to choice for most of my test rigs and builds around here. And to make the deal even sweeter, Seasonic wraps it all up in a cozy 12 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. MSI opted for the exact same cooler design like we've seen on the 3080, but it is slightly longer with a length of 33.5 centimeters. It is 14 centimeters wide and 5.6 centimeters thick, which makes it one of the larger cards on the market. It's not gonna be great for most ITX cases, but it will fit those nice large ATX cases perfectly. The overall design is pretty balanced as well. It is neutral enough, so it will combine nicely with most motherboards and other hardware out there, but it has enough going on to also make it interesting and pretty impressive. It has a big shroud, it has a big heatsink, a nice proper metal backplate, and there is plenty of RGB too, if you're into that. In terms of extra features though, MSI isn't doing all that much to be honest. There is a fan stop feature when the card has little to do, but there is not much more going on on the card itself. There is no dual BIOS, no extra headers, no extra HDMI 2.1 ports like Asus and Gigabyte cards have. But I really don't expect most gamers to really care about the majority of these things anyways. Uh, you still get three display ports and a single HDMI 2.1, which should be enough for most people. If you do need two HDMI ports, you'll have to look elsewhere. Since MSI isn't giving me many features to actually look at, most of its value will have to come from how the card actually performs. So from a speed perspective, there isn't much of a difference between the MSI and the Gigabyte RTX 3090 I have here. The core boost speeds aren't that far off and in most benchmarks, these cards perform very similarly. MSI ends up with a less than 1% performance gain over the Gigabyte card, which could easily be down to, you know, being very lucky with a particular sample. So in raw performance, consider these two cards to be completely equal. When it comes to thermals, MSI's larger cooler does show a really good result, uh, especially if you're looking for a really quiet card. So this Gaming X Trio, even when completely fully stressed, just remains whisper quiet while still maintaining reasonable temperatures. I do think a dual BIOS could really benefit MSI here as, you know, having a second, more aggressive fan profile is nicer for anyone that prefers to see lower temperatures rather than lower noise levels. And that is something that uh, Gigabyte and Asus cards do have. Now, MSI just informed me, like literally 30 minutes ago, that you can download an alternative BIOS from their own website and uh, that will give this card that extra performance mode if you prefer. Now I didn't have time to actually test that and I think I think it's really nice that they are listening to all the feedback we're giving them and they're trying to add what users are missing but that will require you to flash your BIOS every time you want to swap things and I think it's just nicer and easier to you know make your own fan profile in the software and go with that. Nevertheless a physical dual BIOS button would have been the best solution here. Looking at the normalized noise results, uh, with the fan set to 40 decibels at 50 centimeters distance, the MSI does show it has a more efficient design than Gigabyte Gaming OC. 
Three degrees less at a similar noise level is a decent difference, although both cards are objectively, you know, more than fine. But the biggest challenge for MSI here isn't its own performance, but the performance of the RTX 3090 chip underneath and the confusion about who this card is really for. While Nvidia is really pushing hard to make it clear to us reviewers that it isn't a mainstream gaming card, but more focused on 8K gaming and specific you know, memory heavy applications, their own product page remains very much gaming focused and MSI's own product page even more so. So they mention gaming and hardcore gamers and the best gaming experience out there and the ultimate gaming experience even, but at no point does it even bother to mention 8K. So the average shopper out there will only know one thing, this is meant to be a great gaming GPU, which is actually also not wrong, but it's not much better than the RTX 3080 that will cost you half as much. So I really recommend you watch the comparison video I posted earlier today, where I kind of dive a bit deeper into this whole subject. But to make this whole long story short, at 4K resolution, the 3090 shows about 11 to 12% improvement over the 3080, or roughly a 40% over the RTX 2080 Ti. And while the latter is a significant per generation upgrade, and it does mean that this is objectively the fastest graphics card out there. From a value perspective, the RTX 3080 just makes it look bad and it just makes more sense to get. At 1440p resolution, gains over the 3080 shrink to single digits, so in case it wasn't clear just yet, this really isn't a 1440p gaming graphics card. Which naturally means that at 1080p, an RTX 3090 doesn't make any sense at all. It runs every game perfectly, of course, but in most games you will just not see any benefits over the 3080, which is already an overkill at this resolution. It will be a bit faster in some competitive titles, so only if you're a professional esports player who will earn the price of this card by winning some games, an RTX 3090 might make some sense. Not much, but some. What this 3090 can do that no other card can is run games at 8K resolution, which is really impressive to see in person. Keep in mind that this is the amount of pixels of four 4K monitors put together. But even though it's pretty cool to be able to run some games on 60 FPS on such a high resolution, it is still a thing of the future in my opinion and not something really worth talking about today. Now partially because of the very limited choice of 8K TVs and monitors out there and partially because you can run some games but not all games at 8K resolution just yet. So I believe it's just a glimpse into the future and by the time 8K gaming becomes a thing we'll be looking at a new generation of GPUs anyways. What would be the reason to buy an RTX 3090? If you really don't care about how much it costs and you just want the best performing card, even if it's only 10% faster than the 3080, it doesn't really matter what I say today. You already made up your mind and you know, you got your money ready and you're gonna get it anyways. Or if you actually have a professional workflow that needs more than a mainstream GPU has to offer. So either some heavy duty rendering that perfectly scales with the extra cores that you get with this 3090, or something that simply needs more than 10 gigabytes of memory the RTX 3080 has to offer. And if that's you, that's great because the RTX 3090 at $1,500 is a great deal and much more interesting than the Titan cards from previous generations that actually used to cost even more. And when it comes to this Gaming X Trio, if it fits your case and it fits your taste, it's a very good model and really worth checking out. It runs cool enough and it is extremely silent for such a powerful GPU. And I would say noise is often a real concern in that professional environment. So from that perspective alone, it's a very good card to consider. Now, there are some features that are lacking in my opinion, like the second BIOS option and the extra HDMI connection. But if you don't need them, you will not miss them either, right? I do think MSI should make their marketing more in line with the actual target audience here though. Uh, but as a card itself, as long as you know what you're getting and what you should expect here, it is definitely worth looking into. For everyone else, you know, just go and get an RTX 3080 when there is actual stock out there. Now that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you like reviews like this, please uh, give me a like and subscribe to this channel to never miss an upload. Bye guys.